Hey there, everybody. It's Thorpean here again, and today we're hanging out at the plaza. Why? Because today's video is going to be all about mods. Now, if you are new to the game, you may have noticed that there are these boxes all over the place. These little yellow, green, blue, purple, and obviously you probably haven't seen any orange ones if you're new, but if you've been here a while, you know what these are and you know that they're awesome. So there's a lot of them. As you can see, this is a menu that contains all of these things and all of them do something different with like some, some for weapons, some are for armor, some are for tools, some are for this, some are for that. It's really kind of complicated. And the reality is that I didn't really know what's what. The way you add them is you stick an item in here, you put a mod in here, it'll add them on. Anyway, it's a way to modify your tools or weapons or armor and allow them to get extra points or abilities there's all kinds of stuff you can do with these mods. However, like I said, they're really confusing. So I decided, for your benefit, to go through all of the mods, figure out what's what, what works with how, what's the best way to organize it in your head, and which are the best mods for every single equipment slot. That's right, I did it for you. So hang on tight, and we're going to go through all of the mods in the game, as well as the best mods for every item type. I'm going to divide this into chapters so y'all don't have to, you know, look for anything that you don't really want to. Or you can just hang out and watch the whole thing and learn all about the mods. Alright, without further ado, let's get started with the skilling tool mods. And the first one we're going to look at is mining. Alright guys, so before we talk about the mining tools, uh, I first want to talk about something that's good for all of the tools. The first, these are called grips, and grips can go on just about any tool. Uh, the actual limitations are as follows. Uh, they can be on hatchet, pickaxes, rods, scythe, shears, and spears, so they can't go on nets, they can't go on a couple other things, but generally speaking, these are good for almost all tools. So we have the rubber grip. Now the rubber grip will increase the stat of... of every single gathering ability on any tool you put it on by 1.5 and the second grip the upgraded one which are not able to both be on the same tool is the studded grip which will increase the ability of every tool by 2.5 so that's all the things that all the mods that can go on to all tools so let's talk about mining mining has four unique uh modific modifications uh, the first one, and probably honestly the best one, is going to be Drill. Uh, drill is going to increase your mining ability by uh, 3. So it's going to give you plus 3 to mine. The next ability is Bejeweled, which gives you a 50% increased chance of getting gemstones. Honestly, wouldn't use it. Not really great. The third ability is Gold Rush. Gold Rush is going to give you a 15% chance of doubling your gold ore when you're mining gold ore. This is fantastic because a lot of people use gold ore. Next we have the diamond sieve. The diamond sieve gives you a 75% increased chance of getting rough diamonds when you're mining. Again, not a great ability, probably wouldn't use it. Anything that gets you gems really isn't that fantastic because you're better off buying them or getting them from mobs in 99.9% .9 of the time. Just because they're so rare from mining. All right guys, that's it for mining tools, uh, so let's move on. The best mods for your pickaxe are going to be drill, studded grip, and, probably, and gold rush. Uh, I wouldn't bother with bejeweled, I wouldn't bother with diamond sieve. Honestly, there's no point in those mods. Um, hopefully they'll replace them with something better, increase the rate of gems, or I don't know, make them more interesting, but I wouldn't get either of those. So. Drill, Gold Rush, and Studded Grip are the way to go for a pickaxe. All right, now let's talk about farming tools. Farming tools have gotten a little bit more love than the, uh, than the mining tools. So we got a few more mods to talk about. The first one is going to be Spring Loaded. Now Spring Loaded is a shears only mod. It gives plus three farming stat, farming speed. I don't even know what to call it, farming stat. We're going to keep calling it farming stat. All right, so it gives plus three farming stat. It's for shears only. I wouldn't really mod shears. There's not really much point to it because um, nothing you can harvest with shears is really worth getting unless maybe for a trials task or if you want to get like, you know, the best shears possible in case something else comes out that requires shears. Um, but 
<clears throat> Spring Loaded isn't really the only Shears specific mod. And then you have Sickle, which gives you plus two farming stat, but it's Scythe only, so only for the Scythe. The next one is Serrated Edge. Serrated Edge is plus three farming stat. Uh, I can go on either Shears or Scythes. And those are the three kind of stat increaser uh, farming specific mods. Uh, then we have three non like ability mods. So the first one is Bushel. It gives you a 10% chance of double crops. Bushel is great on an end game tool. So I wouldn't necessarily put it on an early tool because you want that farming stat to really help boost your ability to farm things. Uh, whereas the Bushel uh, is great for when you want the crops or when you have such a high farming stat that those couple extra points you get won't really make a huge difference in your life. Um, so they're fantastic for endgame tools. So Bushel is great for what's what I have on my netherite scythe. You could probably put it on an obsidian scythe as well if you have extra bushels, but they're kind of hard to get, so I probably wouldn't. Next up is Bonanza. Bonanza is the only fruit picker mod. It's the only mod that can go on a fruit picker. It's the only place the Bonanza mod can go is on a fruit picker. If you have a fruit picker, get the Bonanza mod. If you're ever picking fruit, you're going to want this mod. It gives you a chance of having double fruits. The last farming specific mod, well, actually this is kind of half farming, half woodcutting, is Green Thumb. Green Thumb gives a 15% 15 chance to insta regrow your tree or your crop when you're done chopping it. So it's great for endgame trees because there are very few of them and they're hard to get. Um, the only crop it's really worth it for at the moment is volcano hops because they actually you can't kind of like perma harvest them because there aren't enough might be worthwhile for nether wart but like why get nether wart when you can't use it for anything so i don't know i probably want to put this one on a farming tool just because i don't think it's worth it so anyway to summarize if you have a shears your best mods for shears are going to be studded grip spring loaded and serrated edge that's going to give you the best possible shears um, if you are, you know, extremely kind of end game, or maybe if you, I don't know, really want something that shears give, you can drop the studded grip and put on a bushel. Yeah, I don't see the point of modding shears, honestly, but, you know, it's up to you. And then we have, uh, scythes. The best mods for your scythe are going to be studded grip, uh, serrated edge, and a sickle. Uh, if you are end game or you know you have such a high level farming stat, uh, you can drop the sickle and pick up bushel instead. All right, guys, that's it for farming. Now let's go on to fishing. All right, guys, next up we're going to talk about fishing uh, mods. So, fishing for whatever reason has received a lot of love in the mods department. I don't know if they needed to fill up something, if they like, I don't know, if some one of the like devs really loves fishing. Um, maybe someone went on like a little coding spree for, I, I honestly don't know what the reason is, but there's a ton of fishing mods. But one of the main reasons for that is that there's three different fishing tools. So there's the net, the rod, and the spear. Obviously these aren't matched in terms of level. This is the best net. This is not the best spear and rod. But besides the point, the point is there are three main fishing tools, the net, the rod, and the spear. So the mods are all designed to go on either the net, the rod, or the spear. Um, except, again, for the studded grip, which can go on only the rod. So, like I said, or, or sorry, they can go on the rod and the spear. So, uh, it can't go on the net, but it can go on rod or spear. So, again, studded grip goes on rod or spear. For the other fishing mods, we're going to discuss them in order from spear to rod to net. Um, because I like that order, and because that's the order I think that is the best kind of fishing. Maybe I, no, I just made up that order. It's fine. That's the order I want. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So for the spear, the first mod in the least nice mod is going to be extended shaft. Extended shaft is going to give you plus one point five fishing stat. Spiky barb is next spiky barb gives you plus 2.5 fishing stat 
After that, we have Claw, which gives you plus three fishing stat. And finally, the uh, first of the purple mods that we're going to talk about in this guide, or the epic, first epic mod that I actually believe I'm mentioning. Oh no, Bonanza was epic. Anyway, one of the epic mods I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention all of them, <laughs> but this is one of the first. So the Harpoon Prongs will give you plus five fishing Oh, fishing power. Okay, we're gonna have to start calling it power because that's what they decided to call it. Okay, so plus five fishing power, and um, again, only for the spear. So that's it for the spear. And then we have the rod. The rod has the dink bobber, which gives you only plus 1.5 fishing power. And then it has, so in, in the case of some items, they have like a series of mods, all of which you can only use one of. So in this case, we have the Dink Bobber, Bubble Bobber, and Waggler Bobber for the rod, but you can only have one bobber. So the Dink Bobber will give you plus 1.5 fishing stat, or power, fishing power. The Bubble Bobber will give you plus 2.5 fishing power. And the Waggler Bobber will give you plus four fishing power. Those are all for the rod, and they are all not intra compatible. So you can only have one Bobber mod. The next fishing rod mod is the Treble Hook. It's the only one, and it's like family, and it gives you plus 2.5 fishing power. Then let's talk about the net. The net has three mods, and they're all on my net. <laughs> so we have reflectors, which give you plus 2.5 fishing power. We have the glass floats, which give you plus three fishing power. And we have the coral trap, which will give you plus four fishing power. So that's it for the stat increasing mods in fishing. Now, like I said, fishing got a lot of love for an unknown reason, and it also has a series of dongles. I don't know if dongles are uh, mutually incompatible or not, but uh, we can actually, oh, I don't know if I can test it. I don't know if I have enough dongles that go on the right item. No, I don't. Anyway, it's not important. The point is that dongles will allow you to prioritize a certain fish. So if you guys might have noticed, there are some spots where they have two or even three types of fish available from the same location. If they're both catchable with the same tool, you will kind of get a mix of those two types of fish, right? So in order to catch one of them more often, you would use a dongle. Uh, now, Generally speaking, I don't see the point of this because there are fishing locations for almost everything where you can kind of prioritize it just by fishing at the right spot. Um, but there are a couple instances, specifically the pufferfish dongle, uh, where I believe there's a pyre uh, adventure or challenge that involves pufferfish fishing in pyre, and then you want to get it pufferfish versus the other fish. But anyway, the point is that, that there are very niche circumstances where you would want to put a dongle onto your item. So the dongles are oyster, squid, seahorse, pufferfish, shrimp, and cod. And they will in turn allow you to catch or prioritize at a certain fishing spot, oyster, squid, seahorse, pufferfish, shrimp, and cod. Makes sense, right? Um, each of these is only allow able to be put on the tool that is used to catch the fish that they are for, obviously. Um, so anyway, so let's talk about best, best mods for fishing tools. For the spear, your best options are going to be either spiky barb or studded grip, claw, and harpoon prongs. For the fishing rod, your best choices are going to be the Waggler Bobber, the Treble Hook, and the Studded Grip. And finally, for the net, your best choices are going to be Reflectors, Glass Floats, and Coral Trap. All right, guys, that's it for fishing. 
Now let's go to wood cutting. Alrighty, next up we've got wood cutting. So uh, the wood cutting has looks like it has a lot of mods, but the reality is it actually has very few. Um, the wood cutting mods are a whole ton of spuds. Uh, and so I'm just going to go through them quickly here. There's each spud gives 20% chance of bark of the respective type and currently gives plus one wood cutting. There's a lot of suggestions out there to make the higher tier spuds give more wood cutting, which I think makes sense. We'll see if they actually go with that suggestion or not. But basically, uh, the spuds are oak, birch, spruce, willow, acacia, dreadnought, baobab, bedlam, and demon. And for each log, basically when you're chopping the tree, you get a plus 20% chance of getting a bark as well. It's great for getting bark. It gives plus one wood cutting, so it's not that great for wood cutting speed or stat or anything like that. But again, if you're at kind of an end game situation where you really only care about the item and it's your pretty much max speed um, and the stat isn't very great, like, you know, if you have 25 wood cutting power, one isn't going to make a huge difference. Um, but, you know. Uh, anyway, those are the spuds. Then there's also splitter. Splitter gives plus three wood cutting. Great mod. Nutty. Uh, is going to give you uh, the ability to harvest one to five acorns when you break a normal or oak tree. It's very situational. If you don't need acorns, you don't need it, obviously. Termite mandibles are kind of nice. They give you a 12.5% chance of giving, getting five extra drops uh, whenever a tree breaks. This is especially good, obviously, for higher tier trees. Um, because in the case, uh, because they, you have to wait between trees for those, so it gives you a lot more kind of drops for less time. And I, I believe you also get XP for the drops, but I'm not sure if that's correct. So that's it for the woodcutting mods. Uh, what's the best things to put on a hatchet? Uh, I would put a splitter, a termite mandible, and the spud for whichever tree you're cutting, if you can get it. Now, generally speaking, this if you're grinding wood cutting, this is going to mean that Baobab stud, spud is going to be the best one that you're going to go for because Bedlam and Demon Trees uh, are very few and far between, so you can't really grind them as well. So Baobab is probably the best spud you want to put on until you're kind of done training wood cutting. So that's going to be the Baobab stud, the splitter mod, and then the termite mandibles. There's also the option of grabbing something like the Nutty mod if you are interested in chopping a lot of normal trees. Um, yeah, so, you know, if you want, if you're going to plan to chop normal trees for any reason, say, for example, you are uh, making a lot of shafts, you might as well put a Nutty mod on. They're super cheap, very easy to get get a little extra acorns and sell them to the NPC, maybe a little extra money. Uh, but termite mandibles are always going to be good. Splitter's always going to be good. And then a spud for that plus one wood cutting. Generally, you're going to want to pick the one for the tree you're cutting so you get that bark increase as well. That's it for wood cutting. Uh, there is one other skilling mod that, I'm gonna, that exists, and that is mysticism. Mysticism will allow you to have a 50% chance of rune forging and getting alchemy XP when you're rune essence mining. So sorry, it's a 7.5% chance of getting 50% of the XP you normally would get while you're rune essence mining. It sucks. There's, it'll fill up your inventory faster. There's really no point in getting it. I'll be completely honest with you guys. It's a tiny amount of XP, a tiny chance. It's not really worth it at all. You're better off getting better uh, mining mods on your pickaxe and just mining runescence a tiny bit faster. All right, well, that is it for the skilling mods. So next up, we've got the absolute mess of mods that go on all the other gear. So you got your helmet, chest plate, uh, cuirass, whatever you want to call them. There's like seven different names for them, but basically these four items, and then plus the pouch, the quiver, off hands, weapons, and that's it that you, and shields and daggers. So that's what we're going to talk about next. 
All right, so in thinking about how to break this up, because there's a lot of mods involved here, I decided to do it by uh, melee, ranged, and magic, and then by weapons and armor. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is melee weapons. Uh, so more specifically, melee weapon mods. So the first mod is rigor, plus 10% chance crit damage. It's okay. Uh, it's great because it is the best option in some cases, and I'll talk about when. But other than that, it's you know it just gives you plus 10% crit damage. The next is Asgard grip. Asgard grips give you plus 2.5 stab, 5 slash, and 7.5 crush offense. It goes on any weapon, those are the battle axe, blunt weapon, scythe, spear, and sword. Uh, it's a pretty good starter mod. It is not the best for some types, but it is actually the best possible for other types. So we'll talk about that at the end. Then you have two... Um, Paired mods, so these are kind of mutually exclusive. You can't put both on. There's Brute Strength, which is plus 6 stab, plus 7 slash, plus 8 crush, plus 0.5% damage, and plus 25% crit damage. And it's upgraded version, which is Greater Brute Strength, which is going to give you a little bit more of all of those stats. Obviously, if you have Greater Brute Strength, that's the one to go with. And then we have a set of three mods that go together, the Stinger mods. There's the B Stinger, which gives you plus three per stab, 10% lesser poison. The Scorpion Stinger, which is plus six stab and 10% greater, 10% chance of greater poison. And the Queen Bee Stinger, which is plus nine stab and a 15% chance of relentless poison. Now these three Stinger mods can only go on either a spear or a sword. And there's one last mod, the Burning Spear, which gives you plus 10 stab and a plus 10% chance of greater burn, which can, I say, hopefully you might have guessed, only go on a spear. And there are a couple of dagger mods, and I know daggers are technically an offhand, uh, not really a weapon, but I'm just going to throw them in here. The Goblin Nashers, which will give you plus three slash, plus three crush, 25% chance of stealing five health. And then the Flesh Ripper, which will give you a plus eight stab slash offense, and a 8% chance of throwing on a relentless bleed. And these are the two dagger mods. So if you have a dagger, you're gonna wanna put on the Goblin Nashers and the Flesh Ripper, because those are your options. Now, for the other weapons. So at this point, the type is still gonna matter, because if you have a spear, or if you have a spear, you're gonna want Burning Spear, the Queen Bee Stinger, and Greater Brute Strength. So those are gonna be your best three. Uh, if you have a sword, you're going to want the Queen Bee Stinger, Greater Brute Strength, and then you can either choose to do Asgard Grip or Rigor. Generally speaking, you would probably choose Asgard Grip unless you really want to stack that crit damage uh, because you, you know, I don't know, because you really want to stack crit damage for some reason. If you have a battle axe, a blunt weapon, or a scythe, your choices are limited because you will really only have three mods available to you. That's Rigor, Asgard Grip, and then one of the Brute Strength mods. So you're going to want Rigor, Asgard Grip, and Greater Brute Strength because that's basically all you can put on your battle axe, blunt weapon, or scythe. So that's the melee weapons, and those are the best items for them. Now let's talk about ranged weapons. The ranged weapons have a few less options. It's nice. Um, there are four different sites, so these are supposed to be mutually exclusive, but at the moment I actually have a spruce and acacia site on my bow. Uh, I'm going to assume that they're meant to be exclusive, so I'm not going to recommend that you do what I did. Um, yeah, so, you know, for that, so because I don't think that's how it's going to stay. All right, so um, the four sites are going to be oak site, birch site, spruce site, and acacia site. These are all going to give you pierce damage. You're going to want acacia site if you can get it. Uh, there's also steady, which can go on a pierce or a blunt weapon. Generally speaking, there aren't any mods for blunt weapons like crossbows. 
Uh, they all give pierce damage, so there's like no point in really using a blunt weapon right now because you can do better with basically any pierce weapon. Um, and the mods that have like a difference in their defense for pierce versus blunt don't have that big of a difference that it's ever worth it to do a blunt weapon versus a better pierce weapon uh, at the moment. I might be wrong, there may be like one or two mobs where that matters, but I wouldn't bother with a blunt weapon. So you have the steady mod, which gives you plus two pierce, plus one blunt offense. You have Elder Gale, which is really good. It gives you uh, plus 10 pierce, plus 25% crit damage, and 8% chance of shooting eight arrows, which is like big damage. Then there's the split shot, which gives you 25% chance of shooting four arrows, which basically means it doubles your damage on any mob that you can you know, hit continuously, which is really good. And then bomb shot, which is AOE damage. So for a, for a bow, what you're going to want is your Acacia Sight. You're going to want a bomb shot and a split shot. Uh, and then if you can get Elder Gale, I would probably uh, take off the Acacia Sight and put the Elder Gale, or take off Bomb Shot and put Elder Gale. Um, but Elder Gale's super rare, so I don't know if anyone actually has it. But I and I don't know. Also, don't know if it can coexist with Split Shot. If it can, then both of them are great. If it can't, then the choice is made. You're gonna want the Sight, the Bomb Shot, and the Elder Gale. Um, Steady is a fantastic early game mod. I think you can actually buy it at the Ranger. So if you have a bow uh, that you're going to be using for more than like an hour, I'd probably go ahead and buy that. It's really cheap. Um, but it's not for the end game because it's, you know, it's not that great. It's only plus two pierce damage. All right. That's it for ranged weapons. Let's talk magic weapons. Um, so magic weapons have gotten a lot of love. <laughs> And, but they kind of come in sets. So it's, you know, kind of a lot of love, but also kind of not. There is a set of swiftness mods. Now the swiftness mods will all make you do faster casting, which is definitely amazingly good. Um, and these are swiftness, prevailing swiftness, blustering swiftness, and rampaging swiftness. You can only have one of these and they, the better they are, the faster you're gonna do damage. Um, the higher rarity ones are quite rare at the moment, so good luck getting them. But if you can get them, that's what you want on your magical weapon. Uh, then you have the sigils. There's four sigils. There's the sigil of air, earth, water, and fire. Each of these will give you plus 10% damage of the element we're talking, so air, earth, water, or fire. Um, Generally speaking, I don't think people really use these very often. Sigil of Fire they might use because, you know, you can do fire. The fire spells, I believe, do the most damage at the moment. But they're, they're fine. They're good. It's only 10%, but if you have the spot, you might as well use it. Um, there is the Unicorn Horn, which does plus 7 physical damage. gives you plus 7 physical damage and plus 7 ethereal damage. And then there is Strider Bile, which is a new mod. It gives you plus 7.5 physical damage and a 35% chance of giving greater poison. Finally, there are four orbs. Uh, these don't actually improve your damage in any way, but what they do is they allow you to hold kind of runes on the staff, which can be convenient, especially if you have a lot of relics lying around and you don't want to buy a lot of runes. You can save a good bit of money this way by using orbs. Um, and that's the orb of air, earth, water, and fire. Each of them will give you 999 of that um, rune and take up a slot. These are great to use as you're going. They're not great for end game because you want to at the end you're gonna want to prioritize damage over saving some money because you're gonna have tons of money. So basically what you are gonna want to do is if you have an ethereal type weapon, you're gonna want the unicorn horn the swiftness, the best swiftness mod you can get, and a sigil for the, you know, um, a sigil of whichever kind of spell damage you're trying to do. If you have a physical damage weapon, you're going to want the Unicorn Horn, the Strider Bile, and one of the swiftness mods. 
Um, if you really want that plus 10% damage, uh, it may be better to do that than the unicorn horn in this case, if you have a physical type weapon. Um, so you may want to drop the unicorn horn and use a sigil for the damage in question. Because, you know, for example, if you had over 70 of the physical stat, that you're better off getting a plus 10% than plus 7 uh, physical. So I would recommend using that instead of the unicorn horn in that case. And I believe all the higher tier weapons do that, have more than uh, 70. All right, that's it for the magic weapons. Now we're going to talk about the offhands. And the only offhand we really have to talk about here is the shields, um, because everything else either doesn't have mods or it was the daggers that we talked about before. Uh, and these sh the shield mods are going to be Reinforced Trim, which gives plus two to all melee defense. Bolster, which gives plus one to all melee defense and plus five health. Fortitude, which gives plus 2.5 to all melee defense, plus 2.5 to all range defense, and plus 15 health. And the Goblin Shield Spike, which gives you some stab and crush offense and some stab and crush defense. If you have a shield, you're going to want the Goblin Shield Spike, Fortitude, and uh, bolster if they're not mutually exclusive. Otherwise, you're going to want reinforced trim. I mean, these, you know, your choices are very limited, so just you know, take what you can get. I believe in the late late game shields are, are used pretty often. So you know, goblin shield spike, fortitude, and then either bolster, or reinforced trim. Either one of them is going to make a very small difference. All right, guys, that's it for weapons and offhands. So let's. We'll see you in a second, and we'll talk about the other armor. All right, before we get hecka complicated with the other armors, let's talk about quivers and rune pouches. Now, some of you may be saying, well, I'm melee. I don't need, I don't use a quiver. I don't use a rune pouch. Well, you should, because some of them, they can give you some extra defense, uh, which is can be very important. Um, obviously, if you have magic or range, you need them, and also you want them for their offensive capabilities but they can give you some defensive stats so it may be worth looking into if you're not using them way as well so let's talk about the quiver first because i'm ranged and i believe that the quiver is the most important and fantastic item in the game it's not true but anyway so there is a series of tail mods which are all mutually exclusive the mouse tail squirrel tail box tail Frost tail, polar tail, and wolf tail, and unicorn tail. If you are a ranged player, you are going to want to use the wolf tail because it provides the highest pierce offense and it gives you two pierce defense, but that's not a big deal. If you are a non-ranged player, or if you're a ranged player who wants a little bit more magical defense, you're going to want to use the Unicorn Tail, because it gives you four physical and four ethereal defense. If you are a non-ranged player or a ranged player who wants specifically pierce defense, then the Polar Tail will give you plus six pierce defense. Generally speaking, I'd recommend the Wolf Tail if you are um ranged because it gives you the most offense and if you are not ranged then either unicorn for magic defense or polar tail for a little bit of ranged defense depending on which mob you're fighting more often and then there are two other really good mods which are going to be the elder gale uh, this is 25 percent crit damage 10 pierce offense eight percent chance of eight times your arrows so that's very good. I'd highly recommend using that. Um, I believe I mentioned it in the range weapon section. That was a mistake. It's actually a quiver mod. My bad. Um, then there is salvage, which will refill missed shots. Um, this is a great mod to have. It's actually one of the ones I have right now because it's very useful. Um, so generally speak oh there's also stockpile mods and the stockpile mods will each give you a 15 percent chance of basically not using 
the ammo that you're using. And those you have to match it to the ammo type you're using. So that's going to be their bronze ammo, iron, steel, rhodonite, mithril, adamantite, crimson, obsidian, netherite. These are great in the early game, especially if you're like always using iron or steel arrows because it'll save you some time making them or some money buying them. Uh, but generally speaking, the arrows are pretty cheap and they don't take too long to make, so they're not great for the end. The end game, if you're a ranger, you're going to want Wolftail, Elder Gale, and probably Salvage because chances are you're just going to be spam clicking, so you're going to miss a lot of shots, and that's going to actually save you more than a stockpile mod would. Uh, Otherwise, you're just going to want one of the tail mods that I talked about before if you're not ranged. Uh, you can also put on an Elder Gale on your quiver if you're not ranged for a bonus 25% crit damage. If you're, you know, incredibly wealthy and don't like money. Okay. All right. Next, we have the Rune Pouch, the other kind of specialty item. And the Rune Pouch have a series, again, of wings that will give you physical or ethereal damage. And we have the bat wings for 2.5 physical, the bee wings for 3.5 physical, firefly, which gives you five physical, duppy wings for 6.5 physical. And then we have the nymph wings, which give you 10 physical and five ethereal. So they're a better physical magic mod than the duppy wings and the first and worst ethereal magic mod. And then there's the spirit wings, which are the flip-flop of the nymph. They give you five physical and 10 ethereal. So they're a worse physical mod, but a better ethereal mod. And finally, the queen bee wings, which give you 12 and 12. So they're the best in both, uh, for both of them. So then we have the elder spirit, which gives you 10 ethereal damage. 25% crit damage, a 13% chance that combat spells will summon the Elder Spirit, and the Soul of Fire, which gives you a 15% chance that combat spells will summon the Soul of Fire, which does greater burn and damage, and the Elder Spirit from before also does damage in quite a bit. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically uh, the mods that are available. There's a couple more that you can put on a pouch that I would definitely not recommend using. Um, that's the Apprentice Emblem, which was 10% chance to recover runes after using them. So the Apprentice Emblem, the Dark Emblem, and the Blood Emblem. Um, honestly, it's not worth it to save the money on those and miss out on a better mod that you could have. Um, and finally, there's this Luminescence mod, uh, which increases your health regen and your stamina regen. So it's great if you're not mage to have this mod, uh, but otherwise it's not really very useful uh, compared to the other mods available. So if you're a mage, what are you going to want? You're going to want the Queen Bee Wings, the Elder Spirit, and the Soul of Fire mods. If you are not a mage, you're going to want the Elder Spirit for 25% crit damage. Again, probably, you know, if you're rich. <laughs> Um, you're going to want maybe a rune recovery, maybe, and you're going to want that luminescence mod for the health regen and the stamina regen. Um, all right, that's it for rune pouches. So now we're getting into the armor, which is gross. All right, guys, so here we go for armor mods. This is the part that took the longest time. I mean, this video took a long time to plan out in general, so high effort. Definitely going to take me a long time to edit as well. So I really appreciate, you know, you guys like this video, share this video with other people who are playing uh, the server. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, follow, drop me some uh, donation on it. You know what I'm saying? Wink, wink. Um, but yeah, anyway. This video was a high effort kind of deal, so I would, uh, you know, appreciate at least a like. Anyway, let's get into the melee range and magic armors. So there's a lot of ways I can organize this. Um, and I think the way I'm going to do it is by the heads, chests, legs, and feet armors. And 
what are the best options for each kind of as I go. So uh, for the first thing we're going to talk about is the head armor. Now you'll notice that there are a couple of mods that repeat uh, in every armor group for every armor type because they're kind of typeless or uh, they go on any any armor basically. One of those, for example, is the bandages mod. If I can find it here. Bandages, right? So it goes on any chest, feet, head, and legs, and it gives the bonuses that you see here. So uh, they'll repeat, and I find it easier to just repeat them instead of um, talking about them, but like at the beginning only, but I will talk about them at the beginning just so you guys know what they are. The first one is Sturdy. Sturdy will give plus 10 health. And the second one that repeats for everything is going to be Bandages, which gives 15 health and one regen. Okay. And then for all melee armors, there are going to be some ones that repeat, and that's going to be a Bolster, which gives plus one stab slash crush defense and five health. Fortitude, which gives plus 2.5 stab slash crest defense, plus 2.5 pierce blunt defense, and 15 health. And resolve. Oh, sorry. No, resolve does not repeat. My bad. So those, those two. For all range items, you're going to have nimble, which gives plus 1.5 pierce and plus 0.5 blunt, both offense and defensive stat. Um... And that's it for all that. That's the only one that repeats for range. And for magic, Marvel is going to repeat for all of them. Marvel is going to be 1.5 plus 1.5 physical plus 0 0.5 ethereal, both offense and defense. Now for all head armors, we're going to see Anguish reduces wither damage and purges wither effects every 30 seconds. Obviously, it's only good against mobs that will do wither damage. So if you're fighting those, grab an anguish. If you're not, don't bother. Moonlight Howl is also useful for any head item, and that's going to give you plus 25% damage at night. And then Resolve, which is going to be plus 25 health and plus 3 regen. For all chests, we're going to have a camel, a valor, which is going to be, sorry, valor first, which is going to be plus 5 health regen, plus 0 0.25 stamina regen. We're going to have a camel hump, which is going to give plus 20 health, plus 20 stamina, and plus 0 0.25 stamina regen. And then the crux of ice and the crux of fire. Crux of Ice is going to be 7.5 Ethereal Offense Defense and Immunity to Frost when under 50% HP. Crux of Fire is going to be 7.5 Physical Offense Defense and Immunity to Fire when under 50% HP. Legs. Legs are going to have a series of three mods called Spider Legs, which is going to be plus 5 Stamina, plus 0 .5, 0 0.25 Stamina Regen, plus 0.5% move speed. Then the infernal spider legs, which are gonna give plus 20 stamina, 0.5 regen, move speed, 30% less burn damage. And the poison spider legs, which I'm not sure why they give less stamina, but they're not as good as the infernal ones. They give plus 10 only, and then they do 30% less poison damage. And then the skunk gland is also gonna be for all the legs. 10% chance of a 5 second, 25% 20 slow, lesser, and it's going to give a lesser poison. Finally, we have the feet. Um, all feet are going to be able to take one of the two hoof mods, which is going to be the donkey hoof, plus 3 stab slash crush defense, plus 3 physical defense, plus 0 0.25 stamina regen, and the upgraded version, the Unicorn Hoof, which is going to be plus 6 stab slash crush defense, plus 6 physical ethereal defense, and plus 0 0.5 stamina regen. All right, so we've gone through all these mod mods now that kind of 
go across the different groups in various ways. So now I want to kind of go through all of the melee armor mods, um, any that we didn't mention, and kind of telling you which are going to be the best for a melee armor set, the range mods, and then the magic mods. So we'll start with melee, because I know a lot of you guys play melee. So for the melee head or helm, we're going to have four connected mods that are all mutually exclusive but called the tusk mods. So these are going to deal boar tusks, which and they're all going to give uh, varying amounts of so like stab or crush offense. So you'll see the boar tusks have plus two. And then the boar tusks are going to give plus two slash or physical defense and plus 10 health. The next step up is the Zor tusks. But the difference here is that if you look closely, you'll see that the stab and crush offense increased, the slash defense increased, but instead of physical defense, we have ethereal defense. Um, so if you're only fighting mobs that have physical damage, you might want to choose the boar tusks instead, but honestly, the other stats are increased, so I probably wouldn't. So the Zor tusks are going to be, you know, more health, more defense, more offense. The elder boar tusks are going to be more offense, more health, more defense, but of physical type, magic type. And then finally, the elder Zor tusks, which are going to be more offense, more health, more defense, but of the ethereal type. Then we're going to have the bolster mod, which is going to give defense and health. Uh, fortitude, uh, which is actually going to be able to go. So bolster and fortitude, we're going to mention now because they go on all. They can go on all the melee armor pieces, which is going to be plus two point five stab slash crush, plus two point five pierce blunt, and plus fifteen health. And then we're going to have uh, all the stuff that we mentioned before. So sturdy, resolve, bandages, anguish, and moonlight hell. So what do I recommend? Well, I recommend putting on Elder Zor Tusks, if you can get them. If not, Elder Boar is fine. It's pretty good. I would recommend putting on Fortitude because you get a little bit more uh, defense or Resolve because there's a little more regen. But generally speaking, I think Fortitude would be better. Um, and then the Moonlight Howl for sure. I know it seems weird to only have more damage at night, but that's about 50% of the time, so it gives a pretty good uh, a bit of damage overall. If you are fighting something that gives wither damage, I would you know maybe have a second version with a anguish, especially if you're going to be fighting that mob for a long time. Um, but that's basically the idea for that. I, I would probably recommend Fortitude, Elder, uh, Zor, Tusks, or Boar if you can't get those, uh, and Moonlight Hell. For the chest, uh, we've actually also already mentioned all the mod options. So I'm just going to go ahead. So that's Sturdy, Bolster, Valor, Camel Hump, Fortitude, Bandages, Crux of Ice, Crux of Fire. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the best ones. Uh, the best choices for the melee chest are going to be um, the Camel Hump, because it gives some stamina and some health. Uh, and then probably Fortitude and uh, Bolster. There aren't a great very many options. If you are fighting a mob that does Frost or Fire damage, or a mob that does Magic damage, then you're going to want to grab the Crux of Ice and Crux of Fire. Um, but generally speaking, those are better for magic users, obviously, because they give magic defense. So, you know, it's one of those things where, like, this, this for this one, you're really going to have to match it to the mob that you're fighting. Um, but if you don't want to do that, then I'd probably go Camel Hump, Fortitude, and either Valor or Bolster. Probably Valor. Plus 5 health regen sounds better than plus 1 of all the defenses. All right, let's talk melee legs. Melee legs, you're going to want to go with the Infernal Spider Legs, um, unless you really want to have less poison damage, because um, the only difference is the amount of stamina. So I'd go with Infernal probably, but if you really want to, you know, counter some poison mobs, then go poison. 
And then I would go with uh, Skunk Land, because that slow is going to be nice, I think. Um, it's not going to be very great, but a little bit extra poison damage never hurt. Um, and then Fortitude. So Infernal Spidal Legs, Skunk Gland, and Fortitude would be my choices. You uh, may have other ones, though, there as well, if you're fighting certain mobs. Finally, we come to the melee feat. And for the melee feat, there's actually a set of mobs we, mods we haven't talked about yet, and that's the paws series. So these have a nice little series of, mod, uh, of uh, mods that are the cat paws, which give you 2.5 slash offense, 2.5 slash defense. The fox paws, which give you 4 slash offense and 4 slash defense. The upgrade of that is the frost paws, which give you 5 slash offense, 5 slash defense, and 5% crit damage. The next step up is going to be the Polar Paws. They give you 7.5 Slash Offense, uh, a little bit of Stab and Crush Defense, and then 7.5 Slash Defense, and then 7.5% Crit Damage. And the best ones are going to be the Wolf Paws, which are going to give you 10 Slash Offense, 5 Slash Defense, plus 10% Crit Damage. Now, if you are not going to be using a slash offense. So if you know for a fact that you are going to be using either stab or crush, then you may choose the polar paws instead of the wolf paws to get a little bit of more defense. If you don't need that slash offense, uh, you will get a little less crit damage, but that defense could be useful. So generally speaking, I'd probably choose wolf paws for the paws mod, um, but you there are situations where polar paws might be better. So we are going to have, you're going to want to take, um, oh, sorry, and there's Toe Spike. So Toe Spike is going to give you plus 2.5 stab offense and a 12% lesser chance of a lesser bleed. Um, and Toe Spike works for melee feet and ranger feet. So what are you going to choose for your melee feet mods? Well, you're going to want to choose your, either your polar paws or more likely your wolf paws. You're going to want Toe Spike. Uh, to give a bleed, especially if you're doing stab offense, but even if not, the bleed could be helpful. And then you're gonna want the unicorn hoof. That's gonna give you a good bit of defense, a little bit of stamina regen. If you really hate uh, getting more defense, so you like to take damage, uh, then you can choose fortitude. Oh, sorry, no, fortitude is also defensive. So uh, yeah, you're gonna want the unicorn hoof, uh, toe spike, and the wolf paws now if you sorry if you really don't want the lesser bleed you can leave off the toe spike and put on a fortitude instead it gives you a little health a little more defense toe spike will give you the bleed and a little bit more stab offense all right that's it for all the melee gear if you look here i kind of put it all together the best mods for each in my opinion all right let's talk range gear so we have the range head, and we've already mentioned all the available mods, which is going to be Nimble, Sturdy, Resolve, Bandages, Anguish, and Moonlight Howl. I would recommend in, for the range head, you don't really have great options, honestly, but I'd go with Moonlight Howl, Nimble, and Resolve. Unless you really need Anguish, in which case I would drop uh, Nimble, probably. All right, for the chest... We're going to want the Camel Hump again, Valor, and Nimble, unless we're planning to fight Magic, specifically Frost and Fire damage dealing mods, mobs, in which case we're going to want the Crux of Ice and or Fire, and probably the Camel Hump or Valor. Uh, but yeah, you don't have a lot of great choices here, so I'd probably go with Nimble, Camel Hump, uh, and Valor, generally speaking, with Crux of Ice and Fire as options. For ranged legs, uh, we have basically very similar options again. So we're going to go with the um, Infernal Spider Legs. Uh, we're going to go with Scut Gland for a little poison. And this is actually really good because that little slow could be very helpful. A uh, 10% chance of a 5-second slow can be quite a nice if you're a ranged player. 
Um, and I would probably go with Nimble, unless you really want a little more defense, then you can go Fortitude instead of Nimble. But, so my choices would be Infernal Spider Legs, Skunk Land, and Nimble. Finally, we have the Range Feet. These are going to have all nothing new that we haven't seen before. So my choices for Range Feet are going to be the Unicorn Hoof for a good bit of defense and a little bit of stamina regen. Uh, toe Spike, potentially, for that bleed effect. Um, and either Nimble or Fortitude, depending if you want a little more offense or a little more defense. Now, I actually believe that I recently found out that Toe Spike, the bleed, requires the mob to move. So if the mob is a ranged mob and, is, mob and isn't going to move, it may be less effective. Or if you're melee and you're right up against it and it's not going to move, it may also be less effective. So if the mob isn't moving or if mobs don't generally move when you kill them, then like if you're melee, then Toe Spike may not be the best option. All right, Whew, so many mob mods. Last one, Magic Gear. For our Magic Head, uh, we've already mentioned all the available mods. So we're gonna want Marvel, Moonlight Howl, and Resolve. Again, Anguish if you so choose. For the Magic Chest, we're gonna want Marvel, Camel Hump. Oh, sorry, I take that back. We're gonna want the Crux of Ice, or Fire, or both. So it, one, Crux of Ice is Ethereal Offense Defense, Crux of Fire is Physical Offense Defense. Um, so whichever one you're planning to use, or if you're planning to use both, you should probably have both of these mods on there. Or if you're super rich and wealthy, you know, you can have separate chest plates, one with one and one with the other. But, you know, that's up to you. So Crux of Ice, Crux of Fire, and then I would also put on either Marvel for a little bit more offense uh, and defense, or you could go with either Valor or Camel Hump for a little more kind of defensive stuff. But generally speaking, Crux of Ice and Fire and Marvel are probably going to be your best choices. Then we have the Magic Legs. And again, you're going to want to go Infernal Spider Legs. Um, you're going to want to go Skunk Gland and then Marvel. Or if you really want more defense, you can go Fortitude, but I would recommend more offensive. Uh, finally, we're going to have the Magic Feet. Uh, and for these, you're going to want to go Marvel, Unicorn Hoof, and Fortitude. So guys, that's it. This is literally a guide to all of the mods in the game. Um, every single one categorized, best options selected. Thank you very much. I'm Thorpian. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. Please like, subscribe, follow here on Twitch. Um, if anyone wants to put this information on the wiki in any way, I have some spreadsheets and a bunch of images made up, so just contact me on Discord. Thank you all for watching, and uh, happy 2022!